Welcome back to Boiler House Garage and to part 15 of our series testing for ethanol content in super unleaded petrol. In this video we're not actually testing a super unleaded but a sample of Jet's E10 labelled petrol. This is for a few reasons. Firstly, none of the Jet garages within a reasonable distance from me offer their super or supreme unleaded petrol. Secondly, I'm in the process of doing a mileage comparison between ethanol blended fuel and Shell V power, which in most of the UK is ethanol free, to see how much difference the ethanol makes to your fuel efficiency if you, or specifically your car, is happy to run on it. The issue here is that none of the E10 fuels in the UK actually contain 10% ethanol. We're currently seeing between 5 and 7.5% and I want as much ethanol close to the 10% as possible to determine what should be an obvious difference in energy concentration versus mileage. Too many people are saying that they've noticed no difference uh, using E10 so that the 10% mandate is somehow fine. However, they're likely using the same petrol that has had 5% ethanol in it long before the new regulation. Finally, and most specific to this video series, is that since we've only found one brand of super unleaded with any ethanol in it at all, it's good to reaffirm our testing method by running control tests, so we can see how we're measuring the level, how long it takes to see the results, if it needs shaking or leaving for any amount of time, and I thought of a new way to prove that once the water has been poured through the ethanol blended fuel, that it is all drawn into the water without any shaking, stirring, or waiting any amount of time over a few minutes. So let's get started. As usual, I'm adding 300 millilitres of water to 700 millilitres of the test petrol to determine the amount of hydrophilic ethanol that is blended into the petrol. Hydrophilic refers to a substance that absorbs water, not to be confused with hygroscopic, which is the ability for a material to dehumidify the air or water vapour in a gas. As with my previous control test confirming my hypothesis, we should see results as soon as the separation line and associated foaming settles without the need for shaking or any mixing method other than for this pouring the water through from the top of the petrol for it to settle beneath it. We expect to see some amount of ethanol in this E10. The line has mostly settled at 340 millilitres, which indicates 6% ethanol content. Since we're measuring 700 millilitres of petrol, a 1% addition of ethanol to the water would be 7 millilitres, uh, which is 1% of 700 millilitres. Then it's a case of finding an additional 1% for every 7 millilitres above the original water level. As discussed in previous videos, E5 will read 335 millilitres on this cylinder, and E10 would be 370 millilitres. The extra 70 millilitres coming from 10% of the 700 millilitres of petrol. Instead of the usual hour, we're going to come back to this after just five minutes as I thought of another way to show that all of the ethanol has been separated from the petrol. So I'll just spark up a cigarette and we'll come back to this in just a moment. Help deal with the effects of high inflation and economic recession by signing up to Nexo. Nexo is an alternative banking platform who offer a debit card that pays 2% cash back on all purchases with no fees. You can buy, sell, borrow and earn both fiat and cryptocurrencies as well as get $25 worth of Bitcoin using the link in the description below. Now back to the video. We can see the separation line remains unchanged and I will now take about half of this petrol out and pour it into this cylinder which will probably be just over the 300 millilitres line and then take 200 millilitres of water and basically repeat the test by pouring it through the petrol hoping that the line settles at the 200 mil mark on this cylinder to show that there is no ethanol left in it despite no lengthy waiting, stirring or shaking. So there's just over 300 millilitres of petrol as it was difficult to pour more of it out without the water in the first cylinder trying to sneak its way in. Now let's pour the water through this and we can see quite clearly there was no more ethanol left in the petrol to pass into the much higher volume in percentage terms of water. As a result we've determined that Jet's E10 is actually E6 or 6% ethanol and that doesn't beat the E7 of Harvest's or Breeze's uh, E10 labelled petrol. I will also test Texaco's E10 as Texaco Super Unleaded was the only one we found so far to contain ethanol so perhaps they have a higher percentage in their standard premium or 95 octane petrol. I'm currently using a tank of Jets E6 let's call it to flush the little bit of Shell V power from my nearly empty fuel tank. Then I can fill up with E6 or 7 to conduct the mileage test. 
Please make sure you subscribe to see that along with the Texaco E10 test, which will be in the next video in this series. Thanks very much for watching.